The men's 1500 meters in this year's Diamond League final is set to be one of the most entertaining and interesting races in this year's Diamond League final. Now, in the Olympic Games, we saw Cole Hawker throw down an amazing upset, taking down one of the most loaded fields of all time, and he closed his final 400 in 53.3. What a legend. But since that time, he has not been able to outrun Jakob Ingebrigtsen. But that does not mean that others haven't, because in this year's Zurich Diamond League meeting, Yard Nagus from the United States also made to take down Jakob. Now, the times have not been as fast as what happened in the Olympic Games, and this may or may not be because that was when Jakob was the perfect pace setter up front for this entire field to run fast. But either way, there is still the prospect of a very quick time in this year's Diamond League final, because we not only have Jakob Ingebrigtsen and Yard Nagus, but we have Cole Hawker, we also have Timothy Chariot, Narven Nuros, Elliot Giles, and Oliver Hoare from Australia. Now, the current pace is slated to hit a 400 time of 56 seconds, followed by an 800 time of 152, and according to the Diamond League page, the target time is 3.30, which may or may not be what actually happens, because if they go out in a rather conservative speed, I would imagine that at least one of these big athletes is set to throw down a very fast final 800, so my guess would be somewhere around 3.28 to 3.28.5, and while there has been some discussion about Jakob going after the world record this season in the 1500, I just do not think that that is possible for this Diamond League race. It has been a long season for these athletes, they're starting to slow down ever so slightly, but that being said, I would love to be wrong. And with such incredible talent set to compete in this 1500 final, again, anything really could happen. So let's head down to the track and see how this men's 1500 in the Diamond League finals in Brussels unfolded. Now to kick off this men's 1500, I just love watching Jakob Ingebrigtsen settle all the way in the back of the pack. I actually think this is a really smart strategy because it minimizes his risk of getting tripped, and then he just slowly increases the pace to the front of the field. Now for the opening lap, the Pacers went out perfectly, hitting a time of 55.7, and then through 800 meters they were at 152.7. They were right on pace to hit the targeted time of 3 minutes and 30 seconds, which is more than 3 seconds slower than Jakob Ingebrigtsen's world lead from this season. But either way, this event was slowly picking up steam, and it was very likely that we were set to see a fast closing 400. Now coming around the final bend with just over one lap to go, Ingebrigtsen swung wide, getting ready to take the lead, and then it happened again. The pace setter jumped out right in front of Jakob and kind of blocked him, and while this wasn't quite as bad as when we saw Marco Arope do this in the men's 800, it still got in the way. And it also happened with Timothy Chariot, who attempted to go on the outside, so there just needs to be some kind of early cutoff where the pacers don't get in the way. And I don't blame the pacer here, I think this was just kind of one of those things that happens by complete accident, but either way this was very noticeable, and with one lap to go, Jakob now had a strong lead, and he was looking very favored to take this win. Now just before the 1200 split, Yard Nagus almost fell. These past 100 meters were just wild, but he somehow stayed on his feet, which looking back on it was pretty amazing, but this really did ruin his momentum as he fell back a few placements over this final 400. Now through 1200 meters, Jakob hit a time of 249.89, which again is a little bit slower than what we have seen this season, but this was still very impressive. And then shout out to Timothy Chariot, the 2019 world champion and the silver medalist from Tokyo who made a move on Jakob. But unlike previous years, Jakob responded back very strongly and was able to hold him off, and these final 200 meters was a complete Jakob Ingebrigtsen jog fest, as he floated away from the entire field and won this race in 3 minutes 30.37 seconds, and notably he closed his final 100 in 12.9. Now battling for second all the way down to the finish were Timothy Chariot and Cole Hawker, and Chariot actually got second in 330.93 against Cole Hawker in 330.94. This was an extremely close finish, and it's interesting to see Cole Hawker not quite being able to close on Chariot, who honestly showed up to play for this Diamond League final. So this 1500 win from Jakob was very compelling and very interesting, and shout out to the rest of the field who ran solid times on this day. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.